from the makers of Coldwater Omo, Mrs. Peel looked at the strange young lady who rejoiced in the name of Ola Monsey Chamberlain. She was certainly very fay. Her mind often seemed to be elsewhere, and her conversation switched from one topic to another without any logical link in thought. I'm so sorry that Uncle had to go out. I hope you enjoy your stay here. The house is old and fusty. Did I tell I'm having trouble with my teeth? Yes. Awfully good teeth, aren't they? White and straight. Extremely. You said uncle just now. So you are related? Oh, no, not really. I'm his ward. Mummy and he were awfully good friends. Mummy's dead now and he looks after me. <laughs> well, I look after him more. He's such an old dear. I mean, he's old, but not a bit stodgy. It's this way to your room. Yes, you see, Uncle really understands me. Oh, bully for Sir Cavalier. A psychiatrist as well as a bridge player. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. So many housewives have discovered that the cleaning power of cold water Omo gives them sparkling clean results. Mrs. Joyce Whelan of East London has this to say. Now try it. Mm -hmm. And it works beautifully. I tried it on my children's clothes, on the general wash, and I noticed straight away that things were cleaner. Mm -hmm. Since then, I, I will have used nothing else but cold water Omo. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Omo cleans best. What's in the war's ice cream freezer today? I say. Wow, wafer. Wonder what's inside. Wow. Creamy strawberry and vanilla ice stuck together with munchy wafers. Wall's wow wafer. Wow. <laughs> Episode two of this story, in which John Steed nurses his sprained ankle, and Emma Peel is constantly reminded that a pack of cards always contains a joker. <laughs> Mrs. Peel had been invited down to Sir Cavalier Rausicana's country home near Exmoor for the weekend. Sir Cavalier was a bridge champion, and he'd wanted to discuss Mrs. Peel's latest article on bridge and mathematics. Mrs. Peel had intended persuading John Steed to accompany her, but Steed had fallen downstairs and severely sprained an ankle. Mrs. Peel went alone, and was more than surprised to find Sir Cavalier not at home, and the old rambling house occupied by his ward, Miss Monsey Chamberlain. In the short while she'd been there, Mrs. Peel had already made up her mind that the stay would be a very unusual one. It had certainly got off to a kinky start. Do you think I'm kinky? Hmm? Oh, I, I beg your pardon. Oh, it doesn't matter. You'll get used to me. This way. Ola led the way up the wide oak stairs, along a landing flanked with suits of armor and tall furniture, and there at the end of the landing was, incongruously, a large swivel door. On the door was painted a life-size playing card. It was a joker. What an extraordinary door. Hmm. Oh, yes. Doesn't open. Not like an ordinary door. It revolves. Look. The door spun round. When it stopped, Emma found herself looking at the illustration on the other side of the door. It was the Ace of Spades, the death card. Extraordinary. Uh, where's my room? Oh, to here. I must say the house is magnificent. About 1620, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. I don't really know much about these things at all. Except that I think this house is dreamy, especially at night. Are you afraid of the dark? Not especially. I love the dark. Owl time. 
<laughs> Full of creeps and crawls and chill spines. Oh, one can imagine all sorts of tingles. All sorts of things. This is your room. Mrs. Peel entered a most gracious room, beautifully furnished with oaken chests, high-backed easy chairs, and dominated by a large, draped four-poster bed. Mrs. Peel was delighted with it. But this is charming, utterly charming. Yes, it is nice, isn't it? Especially the bed. <laughs> One can imagine some pale maiden with golden tresses just lying on it, wasting away for her night to come. At night with a capital K, I presume. Oh, I never knows one's luck. <laughs> of course, it's a bit difficult with a name like I've got. Ula Monzi Chamberlain. Monzi hyphen Chamberlain. So you said. You know what the hyphen is, don't you? The bar sinister? Oh, well, at least that's what it was supposed to mean in the olden days. Monzi hyphen Chamberlain. Did I tell you about Monzi? Yes, you said he was a pirate. Yes, that's right. We've had them all in our family. Pirates, judges, soldiers, nuns. And you? I'm an actress. Oh. What have you done recently? Well, I've only just become an actress. I'd rather be a nun, really. <gasps> oh, just imagine making Benedictus and lovely liqueurs. I think you've got that a little muddled. And the monks make it, not the nuns. Oh. But perhaps you could be smuggled into the monastery? <laughs> oh, what fun, all those dirty habits. <laughs> We've never had a smuggler in the family. Monzi was a pirate, but it's not really the same thing, is it? While Mrs. Peel was unpacking her bag, Ula moved over to the casement window and drew aside the lace curtain. She stared down into the fog. There, in the shrubbery, stood a large man gazing up at the lighted window. We've never had a smuggler or a surgeon or a dentist. Have I shown you my tea? Frequently. We've never had a politician either. Well, that could be a blessing in disguise. Or a murderer. Yet. Ula, where are the rest of the staff? Staff? Well, surely you don't run this place on your own. Only at the moment, for a little while. Nobody stays for long, you see. It's the end of the world here. So nobody stays for long. Except Mrs. Darbright, the housekeeper. She's away at the moment in Scotland visiting her sister. We're between housemaids. <laughs> the old one left yesterday. The new one arrived Monday. I see. And you don't mind being here on your own? I'm not on my own now. There's you, isn't there? Yes. There's you. Well, I'd better start preparing dinner. <laughs> it's funny you're not being afraid of the dark. Mrs. Peel stared at the closed door shrugged her elegant shoulders and moved to the window to straighten the lace curtains. She looked out into the fog and down into the grounds. All was still, silent. The fog swirled between the branches of the trees, seeping into the bushes. There was no sign of the man. Down in the kitchen, Ula moved to the refrigerator and took out a large, fat fish. She took it into the scullery and laid it on the huge, scrubbed wooden table. She glanced up at the clock. It ticked its message back at her. She smiled and moved to a rack of shining knives, selected one, tested its edge, and with a gesture that was more one of cruelty than any culinary act, plunged the blade into the fish's belly and prepared supper. Upstairs, Mrs. Peel finished dressing. She'd changed into a trouser evening suit and put the finishing touches to her hair. She glanced round the room before leaving it and noticed for the first time a large oak chest in almost the shape of a coffin. Intrigued, she walked over to it and lifted the lid. She stared at the contents. It was filled with old gramophone records, all old 78s. Just at that moment, quite close at hand, the dinner gong rang out. Ula stood in the open doorway. Dinner served. Dinner's always served at eight in this house. It's the only thing Uncle Cavalier's really strict about. Ready? I'm quite ready. But shouldn't we wait for him? Oh, no. He's going to be late. He insisted that you go ahead without him. Oh. Anyway, it's ready. Come along. 
Ula led the way along the passage and through the revolving door. The Joker leered down at her. She looked back, and the Ace of Spades now guarded the way to the bedroom. As they walked downstairs to the dining room, Mrs. Peel said, How do you know your guardian's going to be late? Hmm? What's that? Oh, do be careful of that bit of stair carpet. We don't want you falling down and breaking an ankle, do we? Uh, no. <laughs> it can happen, you know, even to the most careful person. Yes, I know. Are you a careful person? Reasonably. You haven't answered my question. Did you ask one? How did you know Sir Cavalier is going to be late? Oh, he phoned me. As they moved from the stairs across the hall, Mrs. Peel noticed the telephone standing on a table. She was darn sure if it had rung while she was dressing, she would have heard it. She entered the dining room, quite the loveliest room in the house. The table was long, with magnificent candelabra at both ends. Placemats lined either side of the table. They all depicted playing cards. At either end of the table, two places were set. The table mats were both jokers. Ula indicated one. If you'll sit here. Thank you. That's strange, playing cards on the table mats. Oh, they're very friendly. The eyes seem to stare at one alive. When I eat here alone, I, I play great scenes to them. Scenes full of desperate tragedy. I want to make the eyes weep. Uh, fish. Oh, the wine's red. Oh, dear, it's all I could find. The wine in the cellar is locked up, you see. Well, doesn't your uncle trust you? No, it's not that. He always locks it up when he goes away for any length of... Oh, I, I just adore red wine, don't you? But it is fish. Oh, I don't mind. My palate's quite adaptable. Oh, that's all right, then. There's the bell if you want anything. Just ring and I'll come to you. Oh, uh, aren't you joining me? Oh, I'm on dart. <laughs> Slimming. It's important for an actress to keep her figure. That place at the other end is for Uncle Cavalier when he gets back. Here's the fish. Oh, excuse me. Mrs. Peel sipped her wine and tasted the fish. Both were excellent. The telephone stopped. Mrs. Peel strained her ears to catch Ulla's side of the conversation. She heard nothing. A few minutes later, Ulla appeared in the dining room. She was dressed in warm, outdoor clothes. A friend of mine in the village has been taken ill. She wants me to go over straight away. Oh, then you must go, of oh, course. Oh, dear, I don't want to leave you here alone. I mean, I, I, feel, I feel a bit bad about it. I'll be perfectly all right. Well, it's five miles, the village. Even if I cut across the field, I, I mean, it's a long way. Well, take my car. Here, the keys are in my handbag. There, I'll explain oh. to your uncle what's happened. You won't like it here alone at night. I'm not the nervous type. I'll probably curl up with a book. Oh, right you are. Ulla took the keys Mrs. Peel offered and, turning up the collar of her large tweed coat, made for the door. I'll see you later, then. Oh, there was something else. You're all alone in this big house. Make sure you lock the door. A short while later, the front door slammed. Mrs. Peel continued with her meal. Upstairs, the revolving door, seemingly unaided, slowly swung round. The Joker was replaced by the death card. Watch it, Mrs. Peel. Your dog gives you a lot of pleasure. Now here's something you must do for him. Give him all new Procos health food for dogs. It's complete. New Procos contains all the energy-giving vitamins and protein a healthy dog needs. So with new Procos, you need feed him nothing else. New Procos health food is all he needs. Care for your dog. Give him new Procos health food for dogs. It's complete and he'll love it. No dirt can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. Mrs. Whelan had to wash greasy overalls. And I said, oh, well, I won't worry. I'll stick it into cold water Omo. And sure enough, every bit of grease is out. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo.